Hey there, welcome to this Resolume Wire 7.16 tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll explore the creative uses of anti aliasing when working with shapes. By default, shapes are previewed crisp to the monitor. When we add a shape render node, we convert the shape, which is essentially a bunch of math telling your GPU to render a shape, to pixels. When we are rendering shapes to textures, we have the option to add anti-aliasing to it. Anti-alias is normally used to smooth out the edges, creating a less pixelated look. But today we are going to use it in a creative way to create blurred shapes. The anti-alias on the shape render node has two directions, either in or out. With the direction set to in, increasing the amount of anti-aliasing essentially shrinks the shape as the process is done into the shape. Setting the direction to out does the opposite. The smoothing is happening outside of the shape. The amount of anti-aliasing is exactly the amount of pixels over which it will fade on the edge of the shape. So alright, we now know how to create blurry anti-aliased shapes. But what can we do with them? Glad you asked. Let me show you a couple of examples in which I have used this technique. In this first example, I am using anti-aliasing to create a very soft, almost glow-like circles. I am using this single shape to create 10 texture materials, each with a different color. The texture is projected onto a rectangle, which in turn adheres to the aspect ratio. Perlin noise is used to move the meshes around. The 2D render is used in additive mode to create the blend. I made this example to demonstrate that shapes can be used to generate useful textures. Anti-alias is a tool to make these textures smoother. In this second example, I am using anti-alias to create another smooth circle. The circle is placed in the corner and copied using the mirror quad effect. The resulting texture is used to displace the texture in node using a UV offset node. I've added a little toggle to switch between 1800 pixels of anti-aliasing and no anti-aliasing at all. The difference between the two is huge. In this third and final example, I am modulating the anti-aliasing amount with a sine oscillator. This is to show to you that anti-alias is not a static value, but can be modulated. I'd encourage you to play with this. Increasing the anti-aliasing on the beat could be a cool effect. But do note that the anti-alias inlet does not take instance signals, as this would be really inefficient at higher instance counts. And with that final note, I'd like to wrap up this tutorial. Links to the example patches can be found in the description below. If you have any questions, make sure to drop them in the comments, and I will see you soon with more wire knowledge.